Yes. Why not? Why not do it this way? More spontaneous than I've ever done it. More where I haven't even settled down out of a long drive. And I just like, let's do it. Let's walk in. Let's press the button. Because I'd be living that Mercury life. I'd be living the Hermes life. I'd be living the in-between life. My life. So when I'm in transition, when I'm in between, which I always am, but in this form, I walk through the door, I open the door, I turn on the lights, didn't even... I still got to load my bags, everything's a mess, but I just had a two-hour drive of my mind clear and things happening and things that I'm hearing and things and information coming my way and it's all happening while Mercury has been going into the sun as started as soon as I started my live stream at the heart of the sun I'll bust a chart up I'm completely no plan but that is the way the way of courage the way of warriors And living on the edge and pushing to the edge of life is can you find those places in your everyday to take a risk? I'll take the risk as a Mercury, Mercury influenced person during this to start a stream and to say what's up. So I want to say hi to Jessica. What's up, girl? I see you in chat along with Scorpio Muse. Hello. Hello. It's a complete, pure Mercury stream with no plans. I just got off the road. And I needed to talk. I could have just com completely started talking to myself, which I was doing in the car, by the way, on the drive. Then I was like, no, I could do whatever the hell I want. I'm going to go in the room, go walking through the temporary place that I'm in. I'm going to press effing go live and I'm going to do it. Because I can. Because that's how I roll. And that's the risk I'm taking. So hello to the two of you in chat. Is there anybody else watching? I have 10 people watching on the booth. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. What the hell's going on today? How's life treating you? How's post-eclipse? We're still in the eclipse vibe, aren't we? We're still Mars-Saturn, aren't we? I feel wild. I feel like no matter what my challenges are in certain parts of my life and other things that I feel dialed. That walking into the unknown thing we do during spring in the Northern Hemisphere, things we do with Mars Saturn when you forge the sword like I talked about on the stream the other day. You got to live for these moments. If you don't know how to live for Mars Saturn moments, learn now. This is the way to do it. Envision it. Do your Piscean thing with it because down the line in a couple of weeks, it's really going to come into play when Mars goes into Aries. And since we're talking about that, hello, Amadita in chat. What's up, Maine? Thank you. I'm sure the eclipse is mind blowing. I didn't get to see it in person, but it was in my heart. I'm already making plans to go to Spain to watch the next one there. Wake me from this. I'm working, but listening. I'm always working and listening. I feel you. I understand that. I feel it. Just like I feel this. Which one do I do today? Do I do this one or this one? I'm going to start using this particular software because there's certain things I can do. And maybe I will do it. But I'll start here. Why? Why, Alex D and chat? Hello to you. Why? Why? Because this. Because Mercury Sun. That's why. Because I'm feeling the fire. Because I have something to say. You know, regardless of eclipse or not, we just had a new moon and we are starting to see the moon out there. It's crescent moon. This is really new moon starts to really start to happen to me. The actions is when it's actually start visible in the sky. 
And we have it with a pure moment as we've been doing today with Mercury in the sun. That's why I went live. I'm just like, okay, what am I going to say? Because whatever I'm going to say, I'm cool with, I'm down with, I'm going to go with, I'm going to engage with chat and say what's up to Bonjour uh, Cosmic Supermarket. Palmer Paints, blue heart back to you. Wake me from this. The Spain eclipse is the day before my birthday, and I want to travel for it too. Hell yeah. Titty and X, pulling up the street. What's up? Listen, your Aries part of your chart, your Mercury heavy person. We're in the middle part of the retrograde cycle. This is it. Did you go send the email? I mean, you could have sent it in the last hour. But send the email or say it to yourself. What do you want? Where are you going? Where, what eclipse zone are you coming out of? And what actions can you take if you could take it that far in your thought process? But really, it's just the thought, the intention, the, the flash. Ruled by that Mars and Saturn here in the chart. That's ruling this Sun-Mercury conjunction. What's up, CC99? Angela. So what the hell else do you want, human being? To have an eclipse, to have Mars Saturn, then to have a Mercury Sun conjunction? What else do you want? What other transits do you want? What kind of life are you living? What do you want to do? Go at get it. Start here. Send the email. Send the message say it to yourself maybe you already sent something else out today maybe you did initiate something i'm initiating right now and i've been initiating the whole day because the messages that have come my way today in my personal life and other things that do with astrology it just got clear and i was like all right no matter what the other challenges i got in my world or let's say in your world can you find that one or two things is it in the Aries part of your chart? Is it in the Libra part of your chart? Could be in the Pisces part of your chart if you're affected by this. But did you have the crystallization? Mercury at its pure melted down place in the sun in this sweet spot with Saturn Mars. I mean, talk about like clear even if you can't stand the message and you hate the message, some clear shit right there, okay? That's the way I'm looking at it. Edwina, welcome. I see you in chat. That's the way I'm looking at it. Let's try something here. That's as big as I can get it. Let's do it again. Right there. Right there. We're also going to pay attention to know that Mercury is in its retrograde thing, at its midpoint of the retrograde cycle here with the sun. We know that Mercury is going to go all the way back, and at some point, it's going to hit this 22-degree place. you got to remember this. As a matter of fact, you want to remember all the late-degree Pisces stuff and all of the Aries degrees. You could pick the zero degrees Aries point. You could pick the 15-degree north node point, the Chiron point, the point of the eclipse, and this 22 degree point, and you have to get it and know that Mars at the end of the month, when it ingresses into Aries, it's going to really put into play, for better or worse, or however how you want to look at it, put into play this whole eclipse story, this whole Aries Libra story, everything, because Mars is going to come in in where it is at its best along with Scorpio. And it's going to do its thing with no filters. And it's going to hit all these Aries places, the place of the Mercury-Sun conjunction, Chiron, Eclipse Point, North Node, a bunch of stuff. And so if you are in the place right now where you're wondering when I could do things, I you talk to a professional astrologer, you could talk to me or everybody else, but on the more intentional point of view, the more place like where it starts here, not just here, like it can come from your loins. You, you take your loins and you put it from here and you could do anything. Let's stop here. I know some of you when I said loins. You guys are going in that other direction. That's okay. You could do that too. But your will, your core, your instinct, and you connect that with the mind plan, 
it's going to shoot you off into the stratosphere the next month and a half during this Mars and Aries transit. It's going to start here at the end of this month. So take advantage of Mercury Sun moments. That's why no plans. That's why in the car for the last two hours driving here, I'm, get, I'm going fucking live. I need to say this to myself. I need to solidify that with myself. I need to solidify and reconnect as always with my Mercury and Gemini because I'd be living that life. I'd be living the Hermes life. You know, for how good I am with my words, there's the other part of me that is fumbles, stutters, goes too fast, overcomputes. For how blessed I've been in my life to be a Mercury and Gemini, to be able to always find myself in the most interesting places at the right place in the right time. And there's a message that comes my way there. Or I'm the one delivering the message, whether I intended to or not, almost guided by something else, some other force, something divine from the tops of Mount Olympus to right here with you now. You hear it in the modern age, the power of the mind and the intention and the, and the thoughts and the words you say to yourself affect your actions, affect everything. I believe it to be true. But I also believe it is divinatory. Sometimes we have the divination comes through other parts of our bodies, the other elements, all four elements. Shit, when we combine them together, that's magic. But when it happens through here, and the potential and the clarity is there for a Sun-Mercury moment like we are right now in Aries, ruled by Mars and Saturn. That sword I talked about earlier, the sharpness of mind, the vision and compassion of Pisces forged into the herald, into a retrograde thing here. There's something needing to be figured out. Is the clarity there? And maybe you won't find it today, but you'll find it during this Mercury thing. And by the time you do, by the time you do in Mars, Mars goes into Aries, hell, let's look at the day that it happens. We'll put right here, Mars ingress into blood, sweat, and Fire sword wielding Aries. Is April 30th. 2024, 8.32 a.m. Pacific is when Mars will go into Aries. I can't even see what I'm doing right now. Right there. Notice. What's happening? We already have the Taurus birthdays happening 10 days in. We already have Venus in Taurus. Now you have the two rulers of the eclipse, Venus and Taurus, in its home. You have Mars in its home. All right? We already had the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction that happens on April 20th. But here's the sneaky thing. And it's not so sneaky. You see the moon that day. As soon as Mars ingresses into Aries, it has an exact sextile with the moon in uh, Aquarius, and it's with Pluto, which basically means in the next day and a half after the 30th, you're going to have a moon or a Mars and Aries sextile Pluto, and then Pluto is going to station retrograde at the same time. This is a tight moment. For people to use, if you, again, correlate it to what I've been saying here about this Mercury moment in the sun and all the degrees of Mercury, you get it. So when we go back and Mars ingresses into Aries, you know at some point it's going to hit 15. Look at Mercury. It's already moving forward, going towards the—that's pretty much— 
going towards the 19 degree eclipse mark, going to his third conjunction with Chiron during the Mercury retrograde cycle. It's it's eventually going to hit 22 degrees where it is right now while I'm doing the stream. And Mars down the line is going to come through all this and it's going to go all the way to the first week of June. So if you're thinking about how this eclipse is playing out for you, you're wondering what's going on. Know that it's going to play out till June. And at the point on the, when we get to the 30th, when Mars ingresses in the Aries, you talk about wielding your sword. Mars is going to be wielded no matter what, for better or worse, make or break, all in, all in, to crush whatever it's attacking or to crush the goal that it's trying to attain as a fire cardinal sign coming out of eclipse cycles and coming through what mercury venus the sun all that what they've done so tal i see you hold on chad same with nadia diz and indeed blessed is in the chat good to see you all and going on the fly along with misbehaving lots of overwhelming emotions the last few years hell i agree i've had i've had a few i know other people and stuff had more than a few than i did because i've heard the stories and stuff's going down as we speak, right? But we don't give up. We know when to chill and to replenish ourselves and to get our bearings. But at some point, this and the sharpness of this and the actions and the impulse, that's where new worlds are found. The courage of Mars. Whatever, how it's happening, the forward attacking at the goal motion of Mars. I'll tell you what, however, wherever the pieces smash and lay after actions, I'll tell you in the moment, it sure feels good. Just ask any Aries, just ask any Mars ruled person or someone who's got Mars predominant in their chart where they, they're suppressing it at times and then it explodes out or how they do it physically in their body. Very important. And what it does to sweat and to be in the in the action, the metaphorical blood and sweat of the fight. It just depends on what your fight is and how you're doing it. But you cannot avoid it. And there are some that don't know how to fight. Who don't know that, afraid of it. But be part of being on this planet is knowing how to fight. Some people literally do it physically with their hands and fists. Like go hit the bag at the gym or something. Not getting literal fights. There's people who do it on the dark side. But as in the fight for life, the metaphorical fight for life, the fight for yourself. To know what you want, what you must do, what you must initiate. That's life. It's like shooting out of the womb. It's the same thing. Raw and unfiltered, even in tears. Even in the calm place. How you do this. Yes, we understand and love the strategicness of let's say the opposite sign of Libra and even what Capricorn does strategically with the plan. But sometimes you don't have a plan. Sometimes you don't have the strategy. Sometimes you can't take it anymore and you're fed up and you're like, I got to do this right now. Like I did this effing stream. I'm about to get the chat. Let's do it again. Sun Mercury conjunction, 402 p.m. Pacific. Obviously, it's been happening all day. Let's do it one more time. Right here. Burn me down, son. Burn me down. So I come back. Crack, smash the chains in my brain. So I can speak my truth. We speak our truth during the Mercury retrograde. Your Aries influenced. 
you made the mistakes in the last week and maybe you're going to make some more here, but you're going to have a chance to redo them, to sharpen up the words, to become more concise during a Mercury and Aries retrograde cycle. Right now is a great moment because of Sun Mercury. But the truth does need to be told. Rachel Dunn, what's up in chat? The House of Twigs, what's up? What's up, girl? What's happening? Who the hell is showing up to my stream on the blue right now? How many people do I have in here? 46, man. Okay, let, let me say something else here about this. And, and it's my bragging personal thing. I, I'm going to brag here because I never do. I've worked so effing hard the last seven years in the astrology world, not just with my practice, but with helping other situations, with conferences, I've lost friends, I've I've gone into power play political situations, I've tasted the pain, I've had to, I've been in tears, I've had accolades, I've had money come my way, I've had all types of stuff, and I'm like, and at the times I've been like, what the hell is am I doing this shit for? And I always have to come back and go, I do astrology for myself because I will never forget the journey of making the connections as a kid to the constellation of Castor and Pollux, what it meant for me, and what happened afterwards slowly to this point right now of the understanding and the beautiful insights and the raw truth, even if I hated it, that has come through astrology in my personal life. And when I entered the social realm of astrology and, and, and have dealt with people, I've seen everything happen. I've seen what humans do with each other to each other, the good and the bad. But one thing, even if I've been tested with my own personal practice or other people or my friends in the astrology world, my colleagues, the one thing that has not left me that always comes back is not only what can I do for myself to make money because I need to survive because I, want, I don't want to do other jobs, and what can I do to the best of my ability to my clients, which is always learn, always bring in new tools, which I'm about to do this year. I'm about to take another workshop. Always look to be better so you can be the best that you can be from your clients. Have I fucked up in the last so many years in the astrology world and made mistakes, boundaries crossing or certain what else or whatever else or failed? Totally. I'm human. I wanted to quit years ago. But I haven't taken care of myself astrologically because I love this game and I know only this much and I want to know as much as I can. Helping my clients or whoever, a stranger on the street, if the conversation goes that way, my words have power, my insight have power, not for me, for them. Third, me participating in the astrology community in whatever form. Some people don't like me. But I'll tell you, I could say this about myself. Overall, in the scenes, in the background, I've done some good stuff. And I've helped some other people, a lot of people, whether people don't know it or not. They, know the, know, they don't know the details. They'll never know the details. I can give a fuck about that. I don't need that kind of clout chasing that you see on Astro Twitter or anywhere else. Because part of me is always mysterious and works behind the scenes because the Aquarius part of me has this thing that I cannot let go at times that I hate. Is that how can I contribute to a situation or group or community of people for the betterment of the whole? As long as I'm still myself in that. And I'm still sticking to that to, to, to today, to this moment. And sometimes you make adjustments. But I've done a lot. I've done a lot. So you know what? I don't talk about this stuff publicly or whatever, but I'm patting myself on the back a little bit because I'm like, I paid some prices to get to the place that I am right now. But I've also seen the benefits of what hard work is, what honesty is, and not just talking, backing it up with my actions. And when you run into other people like that, who you got that connection with, whether it's whatever community that you're in, then you could do shit. You can build stuff. You can change things. You can birth things. You bring all this in to initi initiatory moments that Aries does. Yes, there is Aries me 
and there's Libra the other. They need each other. Mars and Libra need each other. But sometimes they have to walk alone to find each other again. One takes care of themselves. They break new ground in their mind, their heart, their body into the world. And sometimes the old crews, the old people where you did vibe, they go to the wayside and you walk alone on the warrior path. It takes courage to do that. And there's fear inter intertwined. But then sometimes you turn that fear. You turn that fear to all or nothing, to everything, to feel the rush of it, to feel your blood pumping through your veins, to know that you are alive and that you're taking all risk into something that you know that has been calling on you, calling from you, and that you go for it. And you'd be surprised down the line, even when you're walking alone, when you walk that path and you do those motions, who you run into. You're not alone anymore. And there's a new world, a new story, a new idea. Today, I had the new idea. And I am have to let it simmer. But at some point, you put it into action by forging it into something that comes to your hands and through the actions of the universe. And that's how you test yourself. That's how you know. And that's how you know you're alive. Two years ago, whatever, I started this channel. Years before I wanted to start it. If I would have started this damn channel with the things I'm doing now in COVID, I would have 50,000 subscribers. Now, there's reasons why this didn't happen. It's a whole nother story kick myself every day for this one and then I have to let it go and be appreciative of what I have now so when I go live with no announcement no newsletter no social media posts and I'm looking at 46 people watching my stream it doesn't seem like much but it's everything it's huge actually it tells me it tells me that I'm dialed do I see 100 people watching that's gonna happen I know it as long as I'm true to myself and to the game. And I push the edge, but also come from a place of love and hope and inspiration, even if there's a little bit of tough love involved. If you have something in your life that you know you've had to change or you're already done with, and you know your heart is seeking more, that you, you don't want to wait anymore. Then plan it out and go for it. And if you are starting to go for it and do it now, then you walk that path alone. I'm right with you. But know what to ask for help. Know to find the tools to keep the thing going. This is what we're in now. We're in that initiatory moment with airy stuff. It's raw and whatever. It doesn't seem like it even has structure. At the same time, one is pushing forward and they're crying at the same time because they know what they're leaving behind or the remnants and the ghost and the pain and the suffering is on them. But you must move forward. I'm with you on that. You, my people who watch me, a stranger who might find me here. Sword and shield. That's part of life. Anger, frustration, that's part of life. Pressure relief valves, swinging the sword and doing things to channel your anger and frustration into something else, that is life too. We're in this place, we're walking in this place, and we will here for a while with some of the stuff. Okay, I need to say all that. Um, I, Wild Magi, I, hey, thank you for your service. Thank you, Wild Magi. Thank you for being you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, mild, uh, Wild Magi. I really like that, 11. I really like your username. Uh, blessings to you. Oh, Kiara, Mohammed. I mean, I, it's good to say hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I hope life is treating you well, my friend. I haven't seen you on here. Uh, thank says, thank you for sharing your truth so generously. This is what parses us. 
And thank you for saying that. And if I know I'll never meet some of you in person, but I know that you're trying to live in your genuine whatevers, then I'm like, more power to you, man. I'll see you down the road. I'll see you down the road at that town square crossroads place we're all walking to. 11 T levity. Cheers to you. I see a weird uh, thing that says uh, Han tree with high 47 now. Hey, what's up? Uh, a go in chat. Clean music lover. Pisces sun, Venus, Saturn, Aries rising. Or, uh, wow, uh, you, you got everything in two houses right now in your chart. Saturn returns coming your way. Um, Canada Dry with a super chat. Ginger Ale money. <laughs> Thank you, Canada Dry, for the super chat. Thank you so much. It's good to see you here dropping in. A Nadia Diz with a super chat coming from CA north of the border. Thank you for the support that you just paid. Both of you just paid for the gas money on my three-hour drive I just had. Cheers to you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Kiara, thank you for saying that in chat. It is. That's why I'm like, I know I'm dialed in because I could do stuff spontaneous. What I tell myself is like, Nicholas, what would happen if you really plan things out and promo it? Like a lot of these Gen Z mofos do. And some of you millennials, you just, that's what you know how to do. You definitely know your PR. What if I did that and did it in that way? I could have this. That's coming down the line, but I, I can never get along to what I said in the beginning of the stream for those who came later is like, I am a Mercury, heavily Mercury person. It's sometimes the rush and the feeling it's the spontaneity. Me, me having Mercury and Gemini completely perfect parts, how the Uranus, I, how I roll. I, this is my sweet spot. Discipline and structure and planning and scheduling. Yes, that could help me. It's going to happen. <laughs> But I can never get rid of, never let go of, you know, the flow, my flow. Lilac tree in chat, may the road rise to meet you. I'm right here with you. We're right here on the road. Thank you, Lilac tree, for that, for saying that. Um, so, you know, uh, again, I want to send blessings out to all of you. Some of you probably, maybe it was, it's been a heavy week for you. There's a lot going on and you're hiding out. Maybe you're starting to inch out of your cocoon there because, you know, sensitive to certain transits. I get it. I get it. You know, uh, oh, remember to, uh, oh, if some insight has come through your way and all that, you know, just hold on to it, you know, so you can work with it later. I think I'm caught up with chat. Sun Mercury. Kazimi. We dig it. Tomorrow, April 12th, we see here that now we're getting to 23 degrees sun. Mercury's gone back. Now it's coming down towards the Chiron to do the second Mercury Chiron conjunction. That's going to happen, right? And Venus here is at nine degrees doing her thing. It's pretty, you know, pretty hot right there. Actually can be. Uh, yes, I forgot to mention that we're in a Gemini moon right now. So the, hence my intensity. Here's Saturday. Let's point something out here. Look what we're doing right now. We're getting closer to April 20th because when Saturday hits on the 13th, then we are a week away from the official Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that's going to happen probably in the top five, top three transits of the year. Besides this eclipse week, we have this in the background happening. This is happening. 
And if you're catching this, you see what Mars is doing in between Saturn and Neptune. And it's carrying the energy of Saturn with its birthing moment of Mars Saturn here we've had in the last 24 hours. And it's moving forward towards Neptune and eventually through the Pisces stuff or through the airy stuff that I talked about. But you know, while it's here, it's in several days after this that it's going to do that sextile to Jupiter and the sextile to to Uranus. We're already doing Jupiter Uranus. We're already doing it right now as we speak. We're prepping for the moment. And is it a moment? It is. It's an electrifying or a shattering moment. Whether something physically happens that day, it's going to play itself out for the next two months. You're going to see it in play, especially when we get to the Taurus birthdays, when Venus goes through Taurus, when Mercury does, and eventually Mars is going to go through in June, it's going to even hit these places of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that happens on the 20th. And remember that on the one of the last days of Jupiter being in Taurus in mid-May, that it's going to do a Jupiter-Sun conjunction at 28 degrees. I don't know what the hell you all want when it comes to exciting transits and wild stuff being concentrated within two months, but you get it here. And it's like, it's not boring, okay? Oh, Canada Dry, you're dropping some super chats on me, girl. Thank you so much because you, you can. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, thank you. Uh and I see the other one that you did. Oh, thank you, Canada Dry. Thank you. You do you. I ain't going to stop you, but I am going to say, remember to do you. Do you, you. Keep the goals up. Checking them on my phone right now. I'm getting a lot of notifications. That's what's up. I wanted to come on and just say that, not to go this far. I need to do a video for next week to talk about next week uh, because I promised four weekly videos this month of April. I'm going to try something here soon when I get time. I'm in the middle of moving again here next week. I'm going to be really busy, but at the same time, I'm open. I open scheduled up a scheduling up on my uh, acuity scheduling. I think I opened up a Saturday or two, which I don't normally do. And I'm going to do because I'm getting some people who have schedules where they work during the week or the time difference or they live in another part of the world. And Saturdays and even Sundays, if you want to, if you get a hold of me, I always work. I also want to say of the immense amount of learning and oh, fucking such cool shit that's come my way from my clients. I, I from the sessions into the emails and like, you know how much I learned from all of you. I, you know, I have my way. People hire me. They talk to me. They groove with me. I'm starting to get a clientele where they're reoccurring. We're working together. Right. Which makes me feel good. I think I could do my best work like that. But what's happening with you, with you watching or those who I've been with and, and the reciprocation and some of the things that are formulated or have come to in your life, I, not only do I get to cheer for you and see certain things that happen and, and revelations that you have, but I'm learning at the same time as an astrologer. I don't, you know, I know some astrologers talk about this, but, you know, I'm like, I've always been a street guy. Like, I grew up with nothing but a good mother and father which showed me hard work we worked we grew up working together and i grew up in the uh, in the restaurant business i never used to be so vocal i was more shy but i learned to talk to people you want to know the astrology that i really know it's not from the books and i got a lot of them it's not from the conferences I've been to and helped work and do and the recordings I've edited over the years and all these amazing people and books that you all are reading or people you're coming across, whoever you connect to, that that information comes to you and it changes you. But putting that to the side, my astrology has been on the go and talking to people, whether it was in a restaurant or a bartender or on the fly as a photographer or on the street or the person in the grocery store aisle, that over the years is where I've, I've, that's my power. That's my place. That's where my magic is. Really hard during COVID not being able to do that. You could do it online, but I miss the face to face. I miss what happens in situations and being able, my, 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 my chart and what happens, the magic that happens there. That's my astrology. That's where I come from. I don't know how to label it. 
It could be somewhat intuitive. That's part of it. But I don't know how to label it. But whatever it is, it's recognizing the gifts one has. So when I see with clients or strangers on the street and I see them illuminated and I see through a reading or through their own way of finding out and, and reinforcing what their gifts are, I'm f not only am I happy and know that I'm dialed, but I'm learning. I'm constantly learning. And for me, uh, beyond the connection with people and then beyond like nice to have money coming in my bank account so I can keep doing this beyond all of that is like this, like feeling that, that the intricate sacred beauty of life and when we have moments with ourselves in the world, whether it's the world or people where you know you're dialed, you know you, you're on your path, there's nothing, it's priceless. There's nothing like that. You know, yesterday on my Instagram, I put up a reel talking about, regardless of the astrology or the pontification of the eclipse and all that, the fact that there's millions of people watching a celestial event at the same time, you know, is like transcendent. And not only is it transcendent, it's like an eclipse. It's like, it's stuff that, what else do you want? It doesn't get any better than that in life. And even if you're in an eclipse mode and you're watching it and you're knowing millions of people are and there's the struggles of life and one's personal stories, I put myself in that place, the eclipse, the other day. I was like, I'm going to put myself in as many people's places as possible as they're watching the eclipse in person or they're hiding out in the eclipse or doing ritual or they're taking a bath or they're quiet, whatever it is. I, I saw and I felt the stories of so many people, elated happiness, sadness, tears, awe and wonder all at the same time and knowing that I wasn't the only one. that we were watching this awe and wonder in the sky. And for that celestial event, whether someone's into astrology or not, or not, I mean, think about all the astronomers out there who hate astrology. It doesn't matter. We're in the same boat. We're like, we're all loving it together. And for those who don't know, or a, a let's say a young student at school that happened to be in the eclipse path, I remember this because I was in Chicago as a young kid. I remember we all went outside a playground to watch the eclipse and like how it just, we were all blown away. And this is without having the cynicalness of getting older, right? But you think about that. You think about whatever situation that people are doing and everyone's having their own personal intense experience and it's effing spiritual. Well, somebody wants to say it or not, it is, right? And it's like, and we're all one in that place. What else do you want? You know what I'm saying? Like, what else do you want? That's when you know how sacred and how beautiful it all is. You know, you could step out and at the same time, you're stepping in at the same time, life and death and everything in between. And I mean, for those who watched it, maybe for the first time in person, 100% totality, it fucks with your head. The birds start tripping out around you. I've done this a couple of times in my life. I've been there for those things. Everything changes. You're just trying to compute it. Your brain's trying to compute it and it can't because it is put in a place that is off kilter, it seems. And everything else around you is off kilter. But at the same time, you're there together. It is the it is wild. You don't have to take any drugs to go out there with something like that, right? So knowing that, knowing the awe and wonder and the preciseness and the precision and the beauty of where we live and how we do it, at least for a moment, at least for a moment, we were all one. And it's not the last time. But if we think about what comes out of new moons or eclipses and celestial events or whatever it is, we must do our Aries. We must be ourselves and propel ourselves. But it doesn't mean it's like that forever because all you got to do is think about down the line. There'll be the times when you run into other people in situations feeling like you could change your community and change your world. And you'll go back. Go back to some Monday, April 8th, when the eclipse happened and how 
whether you were thinking about it or not, you were with everybody else, millions of people having a moment together. And down the line, when stuff changes, you'll remember, and I'll see you. I remember that time. We weren't together physically, but we're together now. You went your way. I went my way. And we ended up here. And we were to actually together intentionally and spiritually the whole time. So for me, these are the things I think about. These are the things I ruminate on. And these are the things I cry over in my darkness. And at the times in that place, I realize the beauty in that. And I come through and I'm like, wait a second. Pull myself up. I'm grateful for what I have. And it's good. It's good, actually. It's good. What a beautiful celestial event. Thank you, universe. BCB, thank you for the super chat. Uh... He says, you do amazing, powerful work. Thank you for being and doing you. Thank you, BC, BCB. <laughs> um, Canada Dry, pow, you. <laughs> Thank you. Kiara on chat says, knowledge gained from experience is true embodiment of inner knowing. Books can only teach us so much. Agreed, Kiara, and thank you. Also, when you speak, Nicholas, you're illuminated by astrology and the knowledge of astrology is combusted, I like what you did right there, into spirit through embodiment of knowledge gained exponentially. Yes, and you know what? We all do this. We all do this. And you know what, Kiara, you know what? You're acknowledging my individualness right now and at the same time we are incorporated because it's not just me, it's all of you. So it's reciprocal, right? It's reciprocal in the moment, even with an internet chat comment that during a sun mercury conjunction while I'm doing this stream, the types of things that we say to each other, even out loud or in telepathic thought or intention, what it does. And you realize how powerful that is. And Kara, you are doing it right now. So thank you for that. Joe G, thank you. Beat Dizzy, just going back to the start and being grateful. I feel you. That's the other part of this is the humbleness and the being grateful to like eclipses and what that is or others, just full moons. Like you're gonna have to think about eclipses. We're going to full moon. Sometimes, you know, everything's going on in your life and you catch the full moon and you stop and you're like, it feels like you're transported, but you're really back home. And you know you're not the only one because there's other people doing it in some other part of the city. They're just seeing it from a different angle. Everybody's going to be like, look at the full moon. They're having the moment. Going back through chat. I'm, <laughs> I'm ranting today, aren't I? What the hell did I call this stream? Mercury in the sun wild stream. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Uh, See, so yeah, I make myself laugh. All right, so that's my something. That's my something today, you know? Look at the look at the book that's sitting on the shelf here. See, Hermes, Guide of Souls. What else do you want? To carry yourselves out there, okay? Think about the Mercury Sun thing that's happening. Try to find that glimpse if you haven't found it already. All right? Maybe it doesn't have to come during the conjunction right now in the moment. Maybe it comes in the dream. Maybe it comes in the next couple days. But know the power, you know? Know your power. Know your power. And it's okay to pat yourself on the back and celebrate your power. That's the other part of the Aries story too, right? A lot of fire signs in general, the fire sign story. Sometimes it's sitting in the mirror and go, I look good. Or that's, I'm, that was a badass thought, Nicholas. 
or you just say it to you like this is like the thing not needing the approval in the sense or the thing the reflection off it's it's like you know it you say it and you could do it in your way that's the way i would do it right look in the mirror i'm like damn nicholas you're you're on boy you're you're, you're dialed you, you got it man all right let's do it think of any of the times you're in the other space where it's doubt and pain and destroying and deconstruction of oneself and one's mind so when you catch the moments, and this is what Aries brings too, it's not just the, the forwardness out in the world, it's the warrior mentality or the sharpness and the courage it takes to look, to look at yourself, look you in your own face, and to go, not point out what's fucked up, it's to point out like, because some of us don't know how to do this, we weren't shown this. Right? To praise ourselves, to encourage ourselves, to honor ourselves. You could be a little cocky if you have to be. It don't hurt nobody, especially if you're doing it to yourself. Like you, you look at your bad self, you know. Like look, look at it, like look at this kind of thing. And you, sometimes you gotta do that. You turn the tunes on, your, your music in your room, you dance, do whatever, move around, look in the mirror, and just like, yeah, that's it right there, you know. Like you got it. I, I you know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. And it's a lot. It, the thing of what fire signs teach us, I think, right? But with Aries. It is just the rawness of it all. You got to not just use your mind, but put your body, move around, sweat, chop wood, do whatever. That's that's part of the deal, you know. Canada Dry says, the clip's trying my son. It's good. Tal says, I landed here via astrology because of your style, charisma, I like that word, charisma tude. And all, an overall world anthro view. Oh, that's an interesting insight that you're catching from this. Thank you. That's cool. That's kind of like my, that's kind of how I roll actually uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, you kind of, that's, thank you for that. Um, all right. I need to eat and then I need to go do a delivery. <laughs> Uh, Joe G said earlier, my cat went wild and hid in secret place for several hours. Birds and small animals went silent. Yeah, that's the thing what animals do during eclipses. That's when you know. Like, it's just, it, the birds start tripping and everything's, they're doing this thing. I mean, so mind you, that that's a reminder to go, like, it's not just you and human beings. It's nature itself that's all going, what is happening? And what's this moment? And, and it's not just with the humans. It's with the animal world, with living, the life, living, everything. All right, before I go, I'm going to drop something in chat here, okay? And it's something that happened earlier. <laughs> there might be a couple of you that caught this earlier today. Um, I'm going to go to my uh, subscription feed on YouTube. And there was a particular live stream that happened today. I'm going to find the link and drop it into chat. Oh, I found it. Let's do it right now. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. And then I got to go. So here it's 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 spinning. It's trying to probably load here and it's not going to do the best job because my internet is slow cuz I'm streaming. So before I crash my computer. All right. So basically earlier today I got to move this over. Earlier today, colleague, an amazing astrologer, Melissa LaFara had she did a live stream from the month of Taurus season, right? And she did it live with Gray Crawford, as both of you know these two. They sometimes do. I've been on Melissa's podcast several times. I was on her Pluto and Aquarius one. And I, I think the last one we did was, I think, February this year I was on her podcast. You can watch it on YouTube. But today, her and Gray Crawford did a live stream from Gray's place. And they talked about Taurus season. So I'm going to do this. I encourage you to watch it because, you know, they had their own free flow conversation. But there's a little surprise in there. And trust me, you, you just have to watch this sucker. <laughs> there's the link in chat. Please go support Melissa. She's been doing the game. She's such a great tarot card reader, astrologer. I love her insights, the way she formulates and sees things. And so um, go subscribe to her channel. She's almost close to 1,000 subscribers. Go over and do it and watch it. It's a two-hour stream, but you can in the first hour. There's a surprise there for you. Check it out. Trust me on this one, okay? Just trust me. <laughs> and that happened earlier today. So I want to promo two good pals of mine, two people that I love dearly and close with. It's Greg Crawford and Melissa LaVar. Okay, so 
they, you know, they talk about the transits. I like Melissa because her videos start from the beginning of the birthdays, usually around the 20 and 21st and going to the, the, the season itself. But, you know, they start off with talking about the eclipse and some other things, and then it gets interesting after that. So, so check it out. So I wanted to do that and say what's up. And that's it. That's my thing. That's my message. Now I feel better now after this drive. I had all these insights. I went live. People came on here. I'm happy. I got this other book in front of me called The Hades Moon. People know what that is. You go down that way if you want. What else can I show you before I leave? Because my brain. Here's a band, a friend of mine with some weird, cool stickers that they did. This is kind of like my persona as of late, which is this like Saturnian wisdom that's kind of. And then what else? Uh, tape measure, tape measure the lens. I'm like, okay, and then I'm gonna measure you. I'm like, oh, I see how you guys are. I'll measure you up, and then uh, that's it. That's it. That's me. Joji, thanks for stopping by. Everybody, thanks for going on the fly and dealing with my rant and my thing. All right. Uh, a more power to you. You owe it to you to do what you want to do. Okay. I'm going to fade out here. I don't have any of my music here set up or else I would do something like that. Um, okay. And I'll see you this weekend. I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm doing a live stream. It's either a stream or a regular video forecast for week three, April, you know, third week of April. Uh, and I'm going to try to do a video on the jupiter uranus for the 20th i might do i might do an all signs video because by the way if you see people do all signs videos on youtube it is the quickest and cheapest way to get followers and views it is kind of a gimmick actually but it's good because i do them but notice that when you go look at all signs videos there's a lot of people viewing but they're not watching consistently because they're just skipping to the rising sign so from a youtube analytics perspective when you're looking at the analytics graph it's the weirdest graph because there's some people that watch all the way through, but they're really just jumping to the rising sign they want to hear. And it makes it look like there's 10,000 people who viewed the video. It doesn't mean that they watched the video all the way through, right? So I just want you to know that it that's how that shit works, okay? Um, so uh, Lilac Tree, <laughs> what's up? The Leveler is somewhere else. And, uh, oh, Kiara... I'm in love with you, <laughs> right on, Kiara. Big loving blessings to you, my friend. I'm so glad to see you to stop by today, all right? Uh, and I'm realizing the time I do this, I'm able to catch people from other parts of the world, okay? So saying that, all right, it's time for me to go and drink water and deliver something. <laughs> all right, y'all. Ciao, I add you and goodbye, and I'll see you soon. I did this under an hour. <laughs>